Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. In this video I'll be talking about another important construction material and that is steel. Hopefully by the end of this video you guys will have a better understanding of steel frames, you'll have a better understanding of the differences between hot rolled and cold formed steel. I'll also be talking about important properties of steel to consider, specifically when it comes to the design of these steel structures. Let's start by defining what a steel frame is composed of. Before I do that, it's important to differentiate between some terms over here. So the terms that I'm referring to are the structure, the member, the section, and the element. What's the difference? Okay, if you're looking at the overall building that would be your overall structure if i'm just going to be considering one uh, beam say for example that is my member so one component of the structure is your member that's what we refer to as a member and then if i have a look at one of the sections and you can see that in the image in front of you for instance that beam if i sort of rotate it or if i cut it in half and i have a look in the middle then I can see this I-beam that you see in front of you on the screen. And that is composed of various elements that sort of combine together to give the overall uh, member. So your typical steel frame is composed of four main members. Number one, your beams, your columns, the bracing, and the truss or a system of trusses in some instances. The beam and column, we all understand what they are, and you can see that in the image in front of you. The bracing is essential because uh, you need it to resist horizontal loads, for instance, wind loads and uh, earthquakes. Uh, a truss system, again, it's one of these systems that are embedded, and you can see that in the image in front of you, usually for the roof, roofing structure of a particular building. Uh, and a truss, is a very efficient system in terms of allowing only uh, two kind of forces uh, to be handled and that is compression and tension so there's no sort of bending or twisting uh, that would be imposed upon a truss system and so in terms of cost it's very effective to use truss systems uh, in certain structures. Now the construction itself of a steel structure it involves the combination of several members together. The way we link these members together, uh, we can do it in two ways. So number one, through the use of bolts and nuts, as you can see in the first uh, image on the left hand side, and then the image on the right hand side is where you have some sort of welding that combines these two elements, the column and the beam together. Now that we have an understanding of what a typical steel frame is composed of, Let's have a look at the specific materials that are utilized. The first material that I want to go through in this video is the hot rolled steel. In terms of the production process of hot rolled steel, the process itself involves rolling the steel at a very high temperature. We're talking about temperatures that exceed 1000 degrees Celsius. Now at these temperatures, the steel is above its recrystallization temperature and when it's above that recrystallization temperature it's easy to shape and mold into uh, various sections of different sizes. In terms of the sections that are available for you to utilize in a typical steel frame structure, these are the sections that you see in front of you. So you have your equal angles, your unequal angles, your square bars, uh, your round bars, you have the plate, and the plate is often used, for example, uh, as a wall. Uh, you can also uh, get your tapered flange beams and your universal beams, which are very uh, commonly used. And then you have your universal column and your parallel flange channels. So that was for hot rolled steel. There's another type of steel that's commonly used in construction and that is cold formed steel. So in cold formed steel, we're talking about a process that involves rolling and pressing uh, of steel sheets that takes place at room temperature. So notice 
when we talked about hot rolled steel, it was temperatures that exceeded 1,000 degrees Celsius, whereas for cold formed steel, it's usually room temperatures where this process of rolling and, and pressing takes place. Uh, in terms of the final product, uh, usually your purlins uh, that are commonly used inside walls, uh, so for wall frames and for uh, roof structures, these are the common outputs uh, that are formed from cold formed steel. So there's two sections that are very, uh, util very well utilized in the industry, and that is your C section and your Z section. You can see a profile of them uh, in the image in front of you. As I said, uh, mostly these are adopted either as wall studs or uh, in the roof structure. So the image on the uh, right hand side, you can see your rafters and on top of the rafters, these purlins, they sit and you can have the purlins, they can come in either the Z uh, section or the C section. Now to join these purlins to the rafter, uh, you have to use what is referred to as a cleat. Uh, and that's usually welded onto the I-beam. And then that I-beam, which is a rafter, would hold the purlins uh, above it. And then on top of the purlins, would, you would have your color bond. In terms of applications, uh, various applications for uh, the cold form steel. So you can uh, utilize it in commercial buildings. So in warehouses, for instance, uh, you can also have some, some uh, residential uh, houses or duplexes that are constructed from purlins. When I say constructed, I'm referring to the actual framing of the wall, for instance, or even the roof. Uh, and you see that in the image on the right hand side of the screen. Let's have a look at the differences between hot rolled and cold formed steel. As we discussed, cold formed steel is usually used or utilized in the form of purlins that act as wall studs. Uh, sometimes you can get them as well in your roof structure. Uh, in terms of the uh, hot rolled steel, most often you see that in the actual frame itself. Now the reason for that is because cold formed steel has a lower capacity compared to hot formed or hot rolled steel. Now this hot rolled steel has a bigger capacity and as such can withstand extra loads and that's why the overall frame of the structure would be composed of that strong uh, material. Cold formed steel on the other hand, you can use it for a lot of non-load bearing walls. You can also use it for load bearing walls but you need uh, additional studs that are located the uh, smaller spacing within the wall frame. Other differences between hot rolled and cold formed steel. Cold formed steel is easier to transport, it's easier to handle because it's lighter in weight. Uh, in terms of production, it's quicker to produce hot rolled steel because the overall process is more efficient. And in terms of uh, construction, it's easier to install uh, cold formed steel frames if you compare it to hot rolled uh, frame structures. Now, the design process that's involved when it comes to steel. A number of important considerations exist where the designer has to take account these specific aspects. And over here, when it comes to steel, we're talking about the high strength to weight ratio. Uh, that is a characteristic of steel as a material. Uh, there's also the advantage of uh, extra ductility of the steel if you compare it to heaps of other materials. However, there's also certain disadvantages that are associated and one of them is the fact that the strength of steel is often sensitive to temperatures. So hot, if it reaches a really hot temperature then you can have changes in, in strength that take place. Uh, in addition, the steel itself can corrode and that can be uh, a source of issues, of, of multiple issues uh, in, in a construction project. Now, for a, for a structural designer, the designer will need to look at the overall structure and break it down into stages when it comes to the design. Now, if you start from the bottom, if you have your foundations, to link your steel structure to the foundation, you need a base plate. So this base plate needs to be designed to withstand 
the stresses that are imposed upon the foundations from the columns. The columns then, if they connect to rafters, uh, you need to design these rafters. Uh, you need to have a look at the eaves, the strut and ties, uh, the eave haunch, the apex haunch has to be designed as well. And any purlins that will lie on top of the rafters will also need to be considered in the design process. For a designer, you look at two main parameters when you're dealing with steel. And specifically, uh, when you're dealing with hot rolled steel, we look at the yield stress, which is the stress at which the material deforms permanently. And then the ultimate tensile stress, and that is the stress at which necking occurs. And you can see the process of necking happening at the image at the top. So it's where this middle section of the steel uh, gets squeezed and eventually you end up with fracture after necking. So your ultimate stress is higher than your yield stress. Your yield stress is given by the notation Fy and your ultimate tensile stress is given by the notation Fu. So Fu is always higher than Fy and both of them are measured in terms of megapascals. Remember that steel as a material, it has a high tensile strength if we compare it to other materials such as concrete. The profile that you see on the graph, that's just, that's the, pro, that's the behavior of the steel when it's loaded. So at different points, uh, different stresses, you get sort of a different um, characteristic of the steel. So initially it's elastic and that's where you can uh, calculate the gradient of that slope to get your elastic modulus. And then after the yield stress, uh, the stresses uh, sort of, as you increase uh, the stresses and the strains, you eventually end up with, uh, you eventually end up reaching FU, and then that's when necking happens, and after necking, you get the fracturing of the steel taking place. So, to make sure that necking doesn't happen in a steel structure, there's a specific process that a structural designer has to follow. And that process is outlined in the Australian standards. It's AS41000 that I'm referring to. So initially the process starts with considering the load combination. So you're, as a structural designer, you have to consider dead loads and live loads on the structure. And then once you factor in all these factors associated with the dead load and the live load, you design for that load combination and you have to analyze the structure uh, based on that load combination and then you extract your design effects. So your design action effects are extracted and mostly we're looking at the axial forces when it comes to steel structures. So the forces that take place longitudinal in the member, so suppose you had a beam, so any force longitudinal in the beam, uh, whether it's in uh, compression and tension, that's uh, part of the axial force. Uh, you'd also consider shear. So shear that takes place in the, uh, in the steel member and also you have the bending of the steel member. So you have to do that for your columns and you have to do that for your beams, this process. And the overall design uh, procedure will need to ensure that these design action effects are less than the maximum capacity that can be carried uh, by the member that you're designing. That was it for uh, this video. I do hope that it helped clarify some of the uh, aspects associated with steel as a construction material. If you do enjoy this video, please don't forget to check out my other videos where I talk about heaps of other construction materials.